You know, when John Lennon wrote that famous line uh, in a song in my life, some are dead and some are living, he was referring specifically to two uh, people, Stu Sutcliffe, who passed away, <coughs> well, a member of the Beatles uh, after a tour of Germany. Uh, he had since retired from the band, but his passing affected John uh, an awful lot. And the other line, uh, Summer Living, his good pal Pete Shotton, who was the unofficial truth teller uh, for the John Lennon version of the Beatles for a number of years, he wrote a very famous book called uh, John Lennon in My Life with Nicholas Sh Shafter. He passed away about four years ago, but his legacy of being the link to what John Lennon was, John Lennon became and uh, John Lennon, Lennon finally uh, was before he passed away. It was all encompassed in his book. Now I picked it up in a Coles and Bathers in a, in a markdown uh, area of the bookstore and it was one of my favorite books. Unfortunately I think I gave it away to one of the, the libraries up home but my career as a journalist has been heavily affected by the book because Pete's uh, writing style with Nicholas is so concise and so direct it deserves uh, every recognition of one of the most important books on the Beatles ever. Now, Pete Shotton, uh, born Liverpool, August 4th, 1941, ended up being an English businessman and, of course, the most famous former washboard player in rock and roll history. He's known for his long friendship with John Lennon of the Beatles, and he was a member of the Quarrymen, uh, the, the, uh, the, the previous version of the Beatles, and remained close to the group during their career. He was also close to John Lennon uh, right after the band's uh, breakup, as well as George Harrison. Now, he eventually built an independent career as a restaurant manager, eventually founding the very successful Fatty Arbuckle chain of restaurants in England. Now, uh, Shotton, who was born in Liverpool to George and Bessie near Wilson uh, Shotton, again was a close childhood friend of John Lennon and attended uh, Dovedale Infant School and the Quarry Bank uh, Grammar School at the same time as a future uh, Beatle. The two boys were frequently in trouble with their teachers and with their headmasters, often being caned by the headmaster as punishment for the various misdeeds. And he became known at Quarry Bank as Shannon and Lawton or Lawton and Shannon. Now, if you uh, can get a copy of the In My Life book, it talks about the early escapades, everything from, uh, you know, uh, growing up and learning about women and learning about love, learning about being poor and learning about themselves as best friends, which, uh, you know, uh, their friendship uh, knew no bounds, and we'll go into that in a quick second. Now, in 57, Shotton was trying to support uh, John uh, in the Quarrymen playing a washboard until, of course, Paul McCarthy joined the band. Shotton was, well, wouldn't say fired, for, uh, but was let go from the band when, <coughs> after confiding to John that he really did not enjoy playing, Lennon smashed a washboard over his head at a party. However, he remained as a friend and confidant as he became friends with all the Beatles during the group's uh, formation. Now, uh, again, he always said he was a poor musical artist, but he did best in supporting uh, Lennon in his career. Now, Shotton was a regular visitor to Lennon's house on Kenwood on weekends to keep Lennon company, leaving his wife and young son at home or to escort Cynthia Lennon for a night out when her husband was busy with band matters or songwriting. Now, uh, Shotton has uh, has been has impacted numerous Beatles songs over the years that we talked about in my life. Now. He, uh, he's been uncredited with a lot of uh, songs, but as the first person accounts in his books or any indication, there was a lot of songs that he helped out with, either directly or indirectly. He was occasionally invited to observe them, recording at Abbey Road Studios, and sometimes played percussion, Maracas Tambourine, on a few records. Shotton also helped Lennon with the lyrics to I Am The Walrus, remembering a nonsense rhyme that he loved his boys, like Salamella Pinchard, you know, thing, uh, crawling up the Eiffel Tower. But it was a parody of the, the, uh, the childhood nonsense rhyme that he would share together. He also helped Paul McCartney with the storyline of Elder Rigby. He suggested that the two lonely people in the song meet, but too late. John Lennon kind of poo-pooed on a little bit, as mentioned in the book, but McCartney 
took that suggestion and put it all together. Now, uh, that was pretty well normal. Friends and confidants and even the Apple Scruffs were, uh, were making recommendations or were motivating. Uh, the three main, three main writers in the group, John and George and Paul, to seek out, uh, you know, more of a storytelling uh, aspect. And as, uh, as, uh, as it uh, evolved, it, it, as they got older, the songs got better and better. Now, <clears throat> In the book, Schotten also recalls Lenin squinting at the words of a Victorian era poster for Pablo Fanquet's Circus Royale that hung in Lenin's music room at Kenwood while he worked out the tune for being for the benefit of Mr. Kite. Now, according to Schotten, he almost took it directly, the lyrics directly from the uh, presentation of the poster. Now, according to noted writer Stan Williams, Schotten's wife Beth is also the pretty nurse selling poppies to mention the lyrics of Penny Lane. Now, in, of course, You Got to Hide Your Love, love Away, he uh, directly suggested adding the emphatic, hey, to the side of the line in the refrain. And we all know uh, the, that word became iconic within the concept of the, the song. Now, the song itself, You Got to Hide Your Love Away, is one of the most underrated Beatles songs of all time. Uh, people that are of a certain gender persuasion it's kind of an anthem about uh, uh, the dangers of coming out of the closet, while others, it's basically talking about it could be a cheating song, or the fact if you're in love with somebody, you better keep it quiet, because if you bring it forward, maybe, just maybe, everything you built uh, emotionally will be destroyed through rejection. Now, after the Beatles became famous and wealthy, which is, you know, 63 or 64, Lennon and George Harrison later on bought a supermarket on Halen Island and gave it a shot and a run. Later, he served as a manager of the infamous Apple Boutique, then as the first managing ad director of Apple Corps. We know what happened to Apple Boutique. There was a big giveaway after its closure, and wherever the items went to, it's lost in the midst of rock and roll. Now, after Lennon began a relationship with Yoko Ono and Apple started to flounder, shot and part of company with Lennon and the Beatles. He resumed his ownership of the uh, Ailing Island supermarket, which he continued to run into the late 1970s. He then began the Farty Arbuckle chain of restaurants, a franchise designed to bring the feel of the American diner to Britain. The franchise was highly successful in the 1980s and was later sold for an undisclosed sum. He later moved to Dublin, Ireland, living as a tax exile. Now, there's other stories involved with Pete Shotton as well. Uh, the heavy controversy of the getaway weekend or uh, days with Brian Epstein and John Lennon right after, I think, Lennon and Cynthia gave birth. There were some aspects it did. Was it a homosexual affair on the... Uh, on the trip, but uh, Shotton, who uh, uh, I have no way to uh, to think otherwise, said that uh, I guess Lennon allowed Epstein to jerk him off, and eventually, uh, you know, Lennon regretted it because he uh, published reports. He you know he was always he felt either severe compassion for Epstein or derision because being a gay Jew in the middle of Britain was a criminal offense, and. Shot and said, uh, or, or let it agreed, what's a wank between friends? Because uh, in the early years, they would do circle wanks together. It's in the book. I'm not making this up. But you know, when you're a kid, you're trying out different aspects of who you are, romantically, spiritually, whatever. And again, the Pete Shotton book, there's not one person that's ever disagreed with. However, uh, there was a chilly relationship between Schott and Yoko Ono. It's more, it's more described in the book. But when he last saw Lennon, he had a had an inclination that Lennon was trying to tell him something. But we still, up to his death, he wasn't sure what Lennon was trying to impart. Either that uh, he was making a comeback, or he basically wanted to get rid of Yoko, like he did before in the you know the, the last weekend. Anyway. Now, upon hearing the news that Lennon had been murdered on December 8, 1980, Shotton visited Harrison at Fire Park, Harrison's home, to, uh, again, share the grief. Now, the, the Nicholas Schaefer book called John Lennon My Life, of course, was republished later as The Beatles, Lennon and Me, told the story of their friendship from the age of six until, of course, Lennon's death. It's a, it's a humorous book, it's a happy book, it's a sad book. But he always stood beside uh, John. He wasn't a hanger-on or a sycophant. Uh, but Pete 
was almost uh, John's conscience at times, and uh, Pete knew that uh, if he was there for John, if John needed somebody outside the Beatles to talk to. A lot of people believe Pete was his best friend. Like I'm, I'm not an expert on if Paul McCartney was, uh, but uh, all I know when, when John met Yoko, Yoko be immediately, immediately became uh, John's best friend. To, from what I see, I live through it, because he came to Canada with Yoko when I was a young child, and he basically said to the Quebec reporters, this is my wife and this is my best friend. So that's the way it goes. Now, Shotton unfortunately died of a heart attack on March 24, 2007, at his home in uh, Newtsford, uh, Cheshire, Cheshire, at the young age, I think, of 75. So again, uh, the uh, the the amount of memories he shared with John Lennon and uh, Peter has been uh, uh, talking about uh, you know Lennon's legacy in many ways over the years at uh, celebrity events at talk shows stuff like that he seems like a very jovial guy and you know very business related um, but some of the stories in that in my life book is just tremendous because it's a first person account like I said uh, if you really wanted to make money off the John's death you would have tried to publish that book like the hack jobs the Goldman book and different ones over the years but Pete was a decent a uh, solid guy who believed that these friendships with John made him a better person and you know um, give an example in my family uh, in my immediate family they're all like my brothers and sisters and cousins and stuff. I'm, I'm glad that John had somebody like Pete in his life. Maybe maybe Pete was the, the, the person that John wanted to be or the person that John aspired to. I know Pete, uh, Pete, uh, Pete said once, uh, sometimes you didn't know if I was looking up to John or John was looking up to me. So, uh, you know, you got to have those close people in your life in any situation. And uh, let me let me tell you something. That book, when I first read it, I couldn't put it down. I must have read it 15 times in a year. It was near my bed, and when I went to journalism college, I quoted from it and I stole from it many times because Schaefer is a is a great writer. What I call the the three line descriptive paragraphs that were in the book, and it's loaded with photos. You have to pick it up. So this is not a review of the book, but if you want to learn about Pete's many, many pros and cons in his relationship with, with Yoko Ono and the Beatles is all in that book. And I know Brian Epstein as well made a pass at him, but just like Pete Best said, it was just, you know, it was just par for the course. So that's the story of Pete Shotton, what I consider the eight Beatle. <laughs> We're talking about Jimmy Nickel and, and uh, all the George Martin and the people that may be considered as close to the Beatles as they were. I know one thing. When John passed away, uh, that was a big loss for him and his family. So uh, he carried that, you know, 37 years living on the planet after his best friend, John Lennon, passed away. It was a hard go because, you know, uh, I still miss John. Uh, and I didn't have a relationship with him, but John was just like Keith Moon passing away in 78. People like that should not pass away early because they have so much to give. And like the song, listen to the song in my life and hear that line again. Some are dead and some are living. And think of Pete Shotton. Thanks for listening.